welcome to another broadcast from Evangel Worship Center in Mariana, Florida. Our service times are Sundays at 9.30 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and our office is open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. For more information about our church, visit our website at evangelonline.net or call 850-526-2232.
bless the Lord in this place this morning. Jesus, we thank you. Come on, breathe. 
Breathe on us this morning, God. Come on, you know this. Sing it with us. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me.
supposed to talk about hope. I'm supposed to talk about when people lose hope, when people are almost out of hope. Anybody ever been there before? You're like, man, I hope I can hang on. Anybody ever been there before? You know, hope is, a, is, a, is an interesting word. It's an interesting word because hope means you grabbing onto something that you can't yet see, that you can't yet, you know, just put your hands around. There was a story that I heard not long ago of an elderly lady. She was on a plane and she was going to a destination and uh, she was flying along and, and all of a sudden there became a great amount of turbulence. And this plane was just boom, boom, boom. And if you've ever flown before, especially when you know you're over a lot of water and the plane starts doing crazy things, let me tell you, you pray a lot. I've, I've prayed and repented of things on airplanes when it gets turbulence that I've never even done before. I'm thinking, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get some credits, you know, on, on making sure I'm prayed through on some things. And this lady was, you know, on the plane, and everybody else is freaking out. They're grabbing their stuff because everything's going. And this lady is just sitting there, and they told them, you know, fasten their seat belts, don't get up or anything, and she's knitting. And the whole time the plane, you know, everybody else is because <gasps> the plane will drop and then it'll pick back up again. And she just continually. Well, finally it gets to a point where everything levels out and they go, okay, the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. It's okay for you to get up and move around again. One of the guys that had been watching this lady because he's almost in tears, you know, what in the world is going to happen? And here's this lady over here knitting. And he, when they allowed them to get up and move around, he goes over and he sits down by this lady. Someone had got up and moved, and he sits down. And he goes, ma'am, can I ask you a question? She said, well, sure. He said, this plane, when we were in all this turbulence and everything, he said, you know, you just kept on knitting. You didn't seem like it bothered you or anything. Can you tell me what's going on? She said, sure, I'll be glad to. She said, you see, I'm, I'm flying to see one of my sons. And when this plane lands, they'll be waiting on me, and I'll get to see them. And, but last week, another one of my sons, who was a Christian, died. So you see, it's kind of like this. No matter what happens today, I'm going to see one of my sons. Now that is knowing what you have hope in. That is that firm assurance that Jesus Christ has everything under control. Either way today, if I stay here, I'm going to get to see some of my family. But if I don't, I get to see some of my family. You see, when you, when you take everything and you take life and all the different junk that goes on, and you wrap it up into that package, no matter what happens today, I win. Well, Pastor, I don't feel like a winner. But if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, no matter what goes on, I have hope, not in this world, but I have hope in my eternal destination. That gives me peace. That gives me peace. And when I lose that hope, I lose faith in everything. I lose faith in what goes on. I lose faith in people. I lose all of those things. And we understand faith is the substance of things. What? Hoped for. The evidence of things that are not seen. So when I have faith in the evidence of things that are hoped for, what does that mean? It means the evidence is things that I know inside of me. It's evident in my life that God loves me. It's evident in this church that God loves you because I've seen this over and over again. In Psalms chapter 119 and verse 49 and verse 50, David writes this, and it's out of one of the largest Psalms that there is. Here's what he says. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me what? Say that again. You have given me what? He goes on and he said, this is my comfort 
in all my affliction that your promises give me life. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. You know, when I think about this season that we're in, the season of our celebrating our independence, I went back and pulled up the document, the Declaration of Independence, and as I begin to read, here's what the first part of it says. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate an equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of, man, of mankind requires, listen at this, that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. That they should declare, that they should make a statement in, in essence, what they have hope of. It goes on, one of the most famous parts is we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, hope. You know, when, when the writers of this penned it, I shared this, I believe, last year. I don't believe that they could probably have understood all that they were going to go through. For making a declaration of something that they hoped for. Something that they believed in. They believed that they didn't have to live under the tyranny of someone else. They believed that they could pursue something that would give them different results. They had hope in this. And because of that hope, they came together not knowing what their fate would be. We come together as believers, as Christians, as people who serve the God Almighty that we serve Jesus Christ, that we realize the Holy Spirit is here to give us power, we have a hope in something that is greater than we are. And I have an assurance of my hope. Because Jesus said, when he left, he said, don't worry, where I'm going, you can come too. Because my father is building a mansion for us. He's building a place. I have hope in that. These men, they didn't, they didn't necessarily realize all of the things that they were going to go through. It says that five of the signers were captured by the British as traitors and tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons serving in the Revolutionary Army. Another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardships of the Revolutionary War. They signed and they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to something they had hope in. Something that they could not see, but they believed would happen. You see... I believe that in our lives, we have to define what we have hope in. For us to really be able to make it through life, I have to define what I have my hope in. Can I tell you, I really don't have my hope in the governmental structure. I, I don't have my hope in that. I pray for them because the Bible tells me, pray for those who are in authority over you. Pray for them. And I do. I pray for our leaders. Well, pastor, you know, I don't agree with this. It doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. You are still to pray for them. That God would give wisdom to those that know how to hear God's voice. There are certain, you know, you look around and you go, 
Well, they're just ungodly. Well, I, I understand that. But pray for those that are around them that also have the power to shift things that they would be men and women of God that would stand up. I may not have hope in this system, but I have hope in God. I have a hope and a belief that he who began the good work in me is going to bring it to completion. I have hope and belief that if he started that, it's going to happen in my life. I may not be able to see it all right then. And when the signers of the Declaration of Independence signed this, they did not realize all the things that they were going to go through. But I still believe to their last breath they had hope in what they had signed to begin to happen. Hope. Without hope, I might as well just go in a room, close the blinds, shut the door and lock myself in. And wait till I die. I have people all the time. You know, pastor, life is rough. I go, yeah, it is. Get a helmet because it gets rougher. Get a helmet. Well, pastor, I, I, I wanted you to give me hope. Here's the hope. The hope is not in what's going to happen to us here. The hope is what we have over there. I believe that he's able to take care of me here. But I also understand this, that every prayer I pray, thank the Lord, is not going to get answered. You say, why don't you say thank the Lord? Because how many of you have prayed a prayer and then you went back and go, whoo, I'm glad he didn't do that. Because he was working something else out. I have to have hope, not listen to me. A lot of people, they go, I don't go to church anymore because I lost Hope in the church. I lost faith in the church. If that's what your faith is in, you will be disappointed. You will be. But my hope and my faith is that when we come together, maybe one life can be changed. One? Pastor, is that all? Well, the Bible tells me that the shepherd left the 99 and went after the one. He, he went after that one that, that got away, that got out of the fold, that began to stray. And my hope in being a pastor and being the pastor of this church in this community is that at least, God, before I go, let one life be changed. I would love more. But you know what? No matter what happens, no matter what we go through, I have to believe that you called me to this location, to this season, so my hope is not in what I see. My hope is in what I know. And I know this, that one day Jesus Christ hung between heaven and earth, gave his life up for me, so that one day I can be taken out of this life and taken into a life in heaven where I will never know sorrow, another tear will not be shed, my hope is not in this. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, I can make it. That's where my hope is. You see, hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. How many of us have ever lost that feeling of expectation? How many of us have lost the desire at times. You see, we got to go back to where our basis of our hope is all held at. My hope is held in the Word of God. My hope is held on the fact that Jesus said, I'm coming back. My hope is held on the fact that he said in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. You know, that's a great thing to have hope in. In this world, yeah, I'm going to have trouble. But I'm not of this world, the Bible says. I'm of his kingdom. What do you mean, pastor? When I accept Jesus Christ, my residency changes. I'm an American citizen, but more importantly than that, I'm a citizen of heaven. I just hadn't made it there yet. I, when I travel, my passport is a United States passport. My 
That is my identity here on this earth. And if all I hang on to is my earthly identity, then I could lose hope. But when I realize I have a heavenly identity, my passport can get me some places. But one day, my heavenly passport is going to get me to the only destination I really want to get to. And that's heaven. And I have hope for that. You see, they made a declaration. They said, we are going to make a declaration of independence. We're going to separate ourselves. We are, we are putting this in writing. We are putting our lives on the line. I went and I looked up the term declaration. And I'm going to preach to you real quickly three things that Webster said a declaration is. And I, as I sat out yesterday putting the rest of this together, it was like, really, Lord, I'm going to preach Webster? I'm going to preach Webster? But it is so concise that I looked at it and I said, this is, this is who we are. A declaration. It is an announcement, a statement, a communication, a pronouncement, a proclamation about something. When I make a declaration, listen to me, today we celebrate our independence. Today I celebrate, even though we've been celebrating all of the things of of our separation in all these areas. You know what I am the most excited about? My declaration of independence stating that I no longer am subject to to the laws of this life. I'm making a pronouncement today. I am making a notification. I am making a revelation. I am making, or I'm sorry, I'm making a a proclamation. I'm making all of these things. And I am saying this, that no weapon formed against me can prosper. You know why? Because I am, in the, I am free from the tyranny of the world. I am free from the things of the enemy. And today, my declaration, and it just began to come back over me. I've got to say time and time again, when the enemy comes against me, I go, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm making a declaration of independence. you got to remember. you got to remember that this war, this battle was fought over 2,000 years ago on a cross on Calvary's hill and it has been signed not by men but it has been signed in the blood of Jesus Christ and today I make a declaration that I am free from the powers of the enemy and I walk under the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ. It's my declaration. It said, number two, there is a declaration of war. A declaration of war. It is a proclamation, a notification, an announcement, a revelation, a disclosure, a broadcast. It is a declaration of war. You can make a declaration of war. You can make a declaration that I am independent from this. I am am making this statement. And you can also make a declaration of war. And today, I make a declaration of war. I am fighting For every soul that there is, that heaven will not, or hell will not be able to take them, and heaven will be their reward. I make that declaration. I make that statement. And you see, we've got to come back and go, Pastor, how can you do this? Because I have hope, not in what I see, but who I know. That's where I come to. I have hope, not in what I can see, but what I know. A lot of times, you know, I can, I can, I can see different things, but there may be questions about it. But when I know, like I know that even when I travel and I'm separated from my wife, I know, even though I can't see her, 
I can't see the acts of kindness because I may be separated from her. There is a knowledge that I love her and she loves me. That is something I know. It is something that whenever I travel and we go overseas and we do these types of things, I know that my wife is praying for me. Can I see her praying? No, but I know. Why? Because of the relationship that I have for her and because of the things that have happened in our life. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that she is praying for me. She is doing battle for me. She is doing warfare for me, praying for safety, praying for all these different things. And you see, here's the greatest declaration of war and the thing that we can have hope in. Today, Jesus Christ is praying for you. Today, he is speaking to the Father on your behalf. He is going. The Bible says we have an advocate. He is the one that is speaking to God. He is taking our needs. And somebody here today needs to understand you cannot, you cannot, and you must not let go of the hope that you have that God is working on your behalf. Well, Pastor, I can't see it, but you've got to know it. You've still got to have that hope in it. You have got to make that declaration. You've got to have that expectation that is in it. You see, I still believe that we need to be more proactive in the kingdom of God than we are reactive. We need to be more proactive than we are reactive. What do you mean, Pastor? A lot of times when things happen, we go, oh, oh. Now I need to go pray. Were well, you behind? Like if you haven't been praying before, you're behind. Well, Pastor, is God not going to hear me? No, he'll hear you. Well, let me tell you, what if you were proactive? What if you were daily doing warfare? If you were daily praying and saying, Father, Today, I thank you that even though I can't see this happening, I declare it in the name of Jesus. I make a proclamation. I make a declaration. I'm, I, today, if it's for a child, you make that declaration and say, Lord, I thank you that today I believe and I stand in the gap for my child. They are going to be a believer. They are going to do the things of God. Well, pastor, I don't see it, but you keep declaring it. You keep saying it. Whenever they wrote these declarations, they could not see it, but they believed it and they stood firm. They did the battle for them things. Let me tell you, folks. Folks, we need to do more battle in the declarations that we make in this life. Well, Pastor, you know, life just so bad I ain't going to make it. Well, probably not then. You declare it, then go ahead and receive it. You see, the, the power of life and death is in the tongue. We, we need to turn this thing around. We need to be, to be in war about these things. We need to, whenever things are going on in our life, we need to declare, Father, I thank you today that you are working all things together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And that's me. I have hope in that, Lord. When things are going rough in your life, when there are questions, don't lose hope. That is what the enemy is wanting you to do. The third thing is a declaration of faith. A declaration of faith is an assertion, a, pref uh, a profession, an affirmation, an acknowledgement, a revelation, a disclosure, a manifestation, a confirmation, a testimony, a validation, a certification. All of the, a pledge, all of these things, they have to have, you've got to make a declaration of what your faith is in. You know what my faith is in? He said this word will not return void. It will not be canceled out. Today, I make a declaration to you, to the forces of the enemy, 
to everything in those lines. I make a, this declaration. You can fight me all you want to. But as soon as I begin to quote his word, whether I see it or not, it and that thing, that force is defeated. I have faith in that. Well, pastor, again, I don't see it. You're not supposed to see everything because if you saw everything, it would baffle you. It is the, we look through, the Bible tells us we look through a glass darkly right now. Anybody ever tried to look through tinted windows before and see who was in there? Well, didn't you see me the other day? I was driving by. I was waving at you. They got tinted windows so bad you can't see anything. Right now, listen to me. Right now, some of you are going, I can't, I can't see God. I'm losing my hope because it seems like everything I believed in has fallen apart. I've been there. I'm, Pastor, you sound kind of passionate today. Because I have been to the point of losing hope before. I have been to the point of throwing in the towel before. I have been to the point to where I said, it is, it's not worth it anymore. I've been to that point before. But I am here to tell you today... There is something called a restoration that God wants to do in some of us. That's when he takes something that is, is beaten up. Something that seems like it's broken down. And he restores it into something that is beautiful. Michael or Lance, if I could get you all to come to the keys today. You see, I, I believe today <clears throat> that God is wanting to restore some hope into somebody's life. When we were in prayer this morning, there was such a sweet peace that was in that place. There was such a sweet anointing that was in there. And as we began to pray, we said, Lord, today, I thank you that you are going to speak to someone today. Who is it, Pastor? I don't know. I'm going to walk out of here, and I may never know. But I have hope, and I have a belief that if God said it, he will bring it to pass. He laid in my spirit today. As I was getting ready, and this morning as I was up, I was praying. All this morning getting ready, there was just such a, it seemed like such an urgency for someone. And I don't know who I was praying for this morning. I don't know who it was, and I don't, I don't know what your situation is. But I was praying today, and I said, God, you, you know who they are. You know what's going on in their life. And, Father, I, I, I just believe today that you're going to restore hope. And I make this declaration today. You do not have to be bound up by the things of the world. I am, I'm, I'm break every day. Every day I'm praying, Lord, let me break free, let me break free from the oppression, from the things that have bound me up. When they begin to, to put together this document, they had a belief that things could be different. Some of you need to go back in your life and you need to, to reread the document that he gave. It says there is hope there is there is hope there is power that is still yours there is still a peace that can be yours pastor I don't, I don't see it working don't lose hope Romans chapter number 8 verse number 35 through 39 says this can anything ever separate us from Christ's love does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry 
or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day and we are being slaughtered like sheep. He goes on, he says, no, no. Despite all these things, despite the trouble, the calamity, the persecution, the destitute feeling, the danger, the threats, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above nor in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able ever to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see, not only did the signers of the Declaration of Independence believe it enough that they put their name on it, they believed it enough that they gave their lives for it. It's one thing to declare something. It's another thing to live it out. It's one thing to declare, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a believer in God. It's another thing to live it out. It's another thing to say, I will give up the things of this life for something that I know is greater than what I have right here. Today, I don't know who you are and I don't know what may be going on in your life. But I'm here to make a declaration to you that there is still hope. It's not over yet. It's not over until the day that Jesus Christ comes to take us home. There's so many things going on in this world, so many things happening, that it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to, to lose our focus. And when we do that, then we become in the danger of drifting, as we said last week. But I want to remind you today, you need to daily build your hope. The old song says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. See, that's what we've, that's what we've got to hold on to. That's the things that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That it's what gives me hope. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today and you might say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord. I don't know what it is to have him speak peace into my life. Today, you can have that hope and you can have that peace in him if you would let's pray this prayer all over this building it's the sinner's prayer and today if you pray this prayer with us and you believe what you're praying and receive what God wants to do for you today you can have a new hope not in this world but in the things that are to come would you pray this with me dear heavenly father I come to you today in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I have hope not in this world, but I have hope in you, my Redeemer and my Savior. Today I declare I am a Christian. 
I am a child of God.